Hello. I'll be uh, presenting a case report on uh, chronic leak after sleeve gastrectomy, uh, gastrectomy with uh, endoscopic management by septotomy and dilation. We have no disclosures to report. The objectives of this video are to discuss the classification and treatment of sleeve gastrectomy leaks, review the relevant anatomy of a sleeve leak and the treatment by endoscopic septotomy, and, the case and uh, describe a case report with the evolution of treatments from an early sleeve leak as it progresses to a chronic sleeve leak. It has been proposed that uh, narrowing at the incisura angularis causes an increased pressure system within the proximal stomach, which causes a tendency for a leak at the staple line at the, adjacent to the angle of hiss, which results in an abscess. This abscess is difficult to treat by drainage procedures alone because of the persistence of that high pressure system in the proximal stomach. The International Sleeve Gastrectomy Expert Consensus Panel has defined sleeve leaks as acute, early, late, and chronic based on the amount of time that they've been present. There have been several suggested treatment algorithms for sleeve leaks. Uh, we use the treatment algorithm as proposed by the Galval and Netto group, uh, which uh, proposes acute uh, leaks being treated by drainage and antibiotics, early and late by stenting to exclude the abscess cavity, and chronic being treated by endoscopic septotomy and dilation. This demonstrates uh, the abscess cavity at the angle of hiss with the gastric lumen noted in the lower right hand of the screen and the abscess cavity developed from the leak in the upper left. The septum divides this abscess cavity, or separates this abscess cavity from the gastric lumen. Dividing this septum will allow drainage of that abscess cavity into the gastric lumen for resolution of the abscess. We present a 52-year-old female with a history of morbid obesity. She underwent a laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy at an outside facility. On postoperative day one, she developed abdominal pain that was concerning for a leak. On postoperative day two, she was taken to the operating room for a diagnostic laparoscopy with intra-abdominal drain placement. By postoperative day 21, she was still in pain and she still had purulent output from her drain, so she was transferred to our facility for further management. We proceeded with an upper GI, which shows a leak at the proximal stomach. At this point, the leak is classified as early. We proceeded with a st endoscopic stent placement to exclude the uh, area of the leak to try to resolve it. The leak persisted. At this point, the leak is classified as late. We proceeded with a laparoscopic feeding jejunostomy tube placement, balloon dilation of the incisura angularis with an achalasia balloon to 30 millimeters, and a stent exchange, replacing the prior stent with a stent end stent to completely exclude the stomach. This is a picture demonstrating the exclusion of the stomach. Unfortunately, the distal uh, stent migrated as they have a tendency to do, and we proceeded with an endoscopic retrieval of that distal stent to place it within the proximal stent. And we secured it in place with endoscopic clips. The leak still persisted. At this point, it was a chronic leak. Uh, so we set her up for an endoscopic septotomy with a balloon dilation uh, at the incisura angularis. The incisura, as we back up the camera, go past the septum and into the abscess cavity here. The uh, septum is quite large here, uh, so we proceed with a through the scope uh, needle knife division of the septum, dividing the mucosa and submucosa in this area. Several passes of this needle knife are typically necessary in order to divide the septum, and here we had quite a large septum, so we had to do quite a few. Uh, it's not uncommon to uh, have to stop the procedure during the septotomy and come back later to uh, do a further septotomy. Uh, there's been case reports showing uh, having to return one to four times uh, after the initial septotomy. Uh, this demonstrates division of the last bit of the septum to complete the septotomy.
That's the completion of the subtotomy, which should allow for drainage to that abscess. Backing up from the pylorus, we go through the dilated incisura angularis, which again was dilated with a 30 millimeter achalasia balloon, back up to the divided septum and into the abscess cavity. Five weeks after the septotomy, the mucosa is well healed. The abscess is completely drained and resolved. The patient's abdominal pain is completely resolved and they're now tolerating a regular diet. In conclusion, uh, the algorithm as proposed by the Galvao Netto Group is a safe and effective management technique for sleeve leaks. In review, a septum naturally develops between the abscess cavity and the gastric lumen. The septum is divided, allowing for drainage of that abscess cavity and resolution of the abscess. Thank you for your time.